I want to talk about nuclear power because, Matt, I do love that Chris Bowen thought, oh, you know what, here I go. I've got the silver bullet. I've got the harpoon to go right through the heart of this thing, mm. which is it'll cost $370 billion. But as we've shown, there are multiple organisations that have priced the cost of transition that we were already locked into as 1.5 to 1.9 T4 trillion dollars. And even the 370 odd billion dollar number seems to have been grossly overstated. What did you think about Bowen really trying to change the conversation for the federal government back onto what they believe to be a winner, but a 17-year-old kid is able to run rings around him on Q&A and half of the audience agreed with him? Well, that's right, ABC audience too. Correct. I, I mean, really, Chris Bowen, it's a bit sad. He's sort of, Chris Bowen's morphed into Greta Thunberg's uncool uncle, <laughs> really. <laughs> like, you know, he, he's just, he, he's, he's, obs he's obsessed about these things as, uh, as Greta Thunberg, so as obsessive and zealot. Uh, as a as a young kid, but as you said, he, he he can't even win an argument against a young a young kid here uh, because he's just showing absolutely no balance here. I mean, to think that we can totally uh, convert our electricity system to systems of power that rely on the weather when you're worried about the weather becoming more extreme, it's just too uh, laughable to to think about, and it's causing so much pain for all Australians. I mean, people just want answers now about how we can get our energy bills down. They keep coming in, they keep going up. And they're going up in an environment where we keep investing in power sources that we cannot rely on. It is time to do something different. If we want a different outcome, if you want lower power bills, we've got to do something different. And so we at least should be putting nuclear power on the table. As you, as you said, the 60%, 60% of ABC viewers are not buying uh, Chris Bowen's dodgy numbers uh, and his obsessive zealotry. Uh, it's time to get someone in that energy minister portfolio, which will take a le fresh look at it uh, and not just be so ideological like he's cracking on with at the moment. But again, remember, those numbers, that's the government numbers, mm. but, of course, way off their own uh, suggestions when it comes to the cost of transition. Jane? Well, and, you know, it was really interesting to see, too, how Chris Bowen has gotten the CSIRO to back him in God, on these numbers, which are completely dodgy. Nobody, nobody uh, believes these numbers. Yet the CSIRO was tweeting out before the uh, ABC Q&A these numbers. Mm -hmm. Again, trying to back him in. Then Bond was out retweeting him. It's a real embarrassment, I think, for this great organization or once great organization that they're carrying water for this nonsense. But the fact is, if you dive into those numbers, they do not add up anywhere. And the thing, I mean, there's so many things I found fascinating about that appearance on Q&A last night. You know, Will Shackle, the young, young man who is uh, advocating for nuclear power, you know, if he was Greta Thunberg, they'd be saying, how wonderful! But now, but now they're smashing <laughs> it's not him. Brave. And smashing him. And stunning. Social... Stunning and brave. Stunning and brave, man. <laughs> stunning and brave. But, you know, they're smashing him all over socials. Um, you know, and, they, and the left always says about the right poll in this country, oh, why are you so scared of change? Why are you so scared of something new, Paul? Yeah. Well, why are they so scared of nuclear energy? And if it doesn't stack up, make it legal. But also, I like that the left, whenever it gets what it wants, or whenever it advocates for what it wants, it says, well, look at what's happening overseas. I think yeah. I saw a thing in the Sydney Morning Herald a couple of days yeah. ago about, about Finland has a voice to parliament, and that's why it should work. Well, OK, how many other Bolivia countries have Bolivia has a voice to parliament. But how Finland. many other countries have Finland. nuclear power? Finland. Finland, Finland just opened up the first nuclear power plant for 15 years in Europe. Its wholesale power price crashed by 75% after the opening of that nuclear power plant. Wouldn't that be a good problem to have? They actually had to curtail the amount of power it was making because it was dropping prices by too much. Uh, wouldn't we love to have that problem? And I just want to finish here, Paul, by just, just spelling out for people the dodginess of Chris Bowen's figures. Where he gets those figures from is from a 2015 International Energy Agency study which costed traditional nuclear power at $8,000 a kilowatt. Uh, the CSRO said, well, it's about probably, probably small modular reactors about double that cost, so mm. we've got to 16000 And then they've escalated it for inflation for 2030. They're eight years old figures that are based on a sort of rough rule of thumb estimate of what an SMR would cost. Mm. They're not worth being a back of the envelope estimate. It is embarrassing for our pr premier, what was our premier industrial science organisation, the CSIRO, to put their name to this rubbish. Well, and remember, their uh, cost of transition uh, number in 2018 was uh, 1000000000 billion, $1 trillion. They then revised that down now to 500. But then a couple of other organisations, like, again, that far right-wing think tank Bloomberg, is saying the best part of, what, one and a half, one point nine T4 trillion trillion, lads. Do appreciate it. Mm. We'll talk to you all again very, very soon.